Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of stories to hit today with relevance across a wide range of the community's favorite topics. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star with no sunspots, no solar flares, no ejections, just southern coronal holes. We did see one nearly eruptive moment over the northeastern limb where a filament cartwheeled up at the polar crown. The solar wind stream at Earth had a slight intensification with the density and then speed rise, looking like a junior varsity version of a coronal hole stream impact, barely a geomagnetic nudge on the charts. And of note regarding yesterday's earthquake watch, it is based on the sun-to-earth connection of this very coronal hole, sun-to-earth field direction as well, which is right in the middle of the phi angle charts. We have bounced around the top and bottom of that panel, but the shift should be imminent along with the larger earthquakes. Meanwhile, the other lithospheric concern is for volcanoes and Santorini in Greece has a swarm of tremors beneath it. While eruptive phase has not been indicated, the region merits the utmost concern because the entire waterway area there is a volcanic crater, one of the most terrible at any awake volcano. Up next, so while some places used to snow in the U.S. have gone without, oftentimes you can find it just down the road in the same state, also across the multi-storm hit zones in the states which have been dropping their snow records all winter long. This has caused a number of deadly traffic incidents as well, and in Europe, has triggered the white waves from the mountains. Looking ahead, I want to run the U.S. Western forecast for the work week. Southern California set up to take a couple of storms. One will hit the north much harder, and all delivering snow to unexpected regions, getting a ton here in the high desert of New Mexico, for example. Up next, let's go to that same pressure setup injecting frigid air into a system heading right over Greece and Turkey, and which is dropping snow pretty much everywhere to the north of them. So folks, I hope you can see the difference between these two shots. On the left, we have the official Allwise catalog, and a few scientists didn't like the restricted sim time and source inclusion, so they improved it. On the right, added longer exposures and other source catalogs to assist in location of deep field galaxies. It now claims to locate two billion sources in the sky, and my oh my, do they have a fun interactive tool for you. Linked below, you can zoom and scroll on the wave projection of the heavens. That line is the galactic plane for those new to this type of projection. That bright spot near the bottom of the U on the left side of it is the galactic center. You can zoom in much more than one might expect, and while it might take a moment to load the zoom frames on your device, it is well worth the wait. In addition to having the super zoom ability, the catalog also lets you toggle between source maps, including the dust map which I'm pretty sure includes the dusty shell of a former cosmic jet at the center of our galaxy, and also the H-alpha, which helped combined with the dust to lead to the concept that much of the missing matter is normal matter we just can't see. Double story here. First, forever satellites that run on steam from mined water on asteroids are on the deck, and they'll never run out of fuel. Why? Star water, stellar winds plus rock, yanks the bonds of the oxygen and forms with the hydrogen, and it's ubiquitous across the universe. It's also cool that they used exolith lab soils for the study. Billy is already working with some in our plasma lab if you caught our latest Deeper Look episode on the website. We will indeed have Mars, Moon, and asteroid samples at the conference as well for you to check out. Top two stories begin with Nova Dust. While we learned just last week that they can produce silicon dioxide, crustal material, and glass, here we learn of highly iron-rich shell remnants in the Large Magellanic Cloud. Next, let's look at the center of our galaxy, where they are finding a major black hole problem. What Plasma Universe calls an active galactic nucleus, and oddly what Electric Universe calls a plasmoid, the things most known as black holes have finally shown a key feature indicative of a great reconsideration required. The difference between the suggested masses based on X-ray and gravitational wave detections is wrong. X-ray provides a solid range of mass possibilities, and yet the waves tell a story falling outside that range. Here's to the nucleus, revealing her secrets. Folks, in one month, many of you will be on your way to Albuquerque for observing the frontier 2019. Some may have arrived already. Electric plasma universe, grand solar minimum, pole shift, micronova, and more. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.